No, I made you and I can unmake you. That makes me your father. Hey, everybody, welcome to Backish of Sal. Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's go back <laughs> to a simpler time when everything got really complicated. 1993, Vengeance of Bane. This Batman book comes on the shelves and just knocks people's socks off. And it's part of a like three-point plan to sell lots of Batman comic books. So Superman dies, but... Okay. Superman's death. I mean, if Superman's dead, you're going to sell Batman. Uh, yeah, because they have no other place to go. Except for the, like, four or five weekly books that are called Superman that you can buy at the same time that are starring four different Supermen. And they're really undercutting Ugh. their profits there. Seriously, dude, it feels... Uh, you. Have, I have, like, three long boxes full of essentially three months' worth of Superman <laughs> comics. See, what have you done? You proved them right! <laughs> yeah, I know. Listen, 1993, that was a good time. It was a good time for everybody. Everybody was doing well. But the Batman offices were like, we're gonna do this thing. There is some speculation about whether that was inspired by or just happening around the same time, if there was some kind of synergy going on. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't that the Bat offices were like, oh, you're killing Superman? Well, we're gonna break the Bat. But rather, when Superman was leading towards the death, they're like, well, I think we have our marketing plan. Like, <laughs> I will definitely steal the marketing strategy from the death of Superman because uh, it's sold. <laughs> and that's how we do it. And that's fair. I don't blame them for that. But it wasn't isn't it, like... Go ahead. I was going to say, isn't it, though, almost as consequential for Batman as the death of Superman was for Superman? Like, it seems yeah. awfully coincidental. It is, isn't it? It's weird. Because well, it's, it's, it's not just marketing, right? Like, it was a major change in the status quo for Batman. Yes, but like the death of Superman, they were going to put him back. <laughs> well, in a yes. short amount of time. It was it was all a lie. It was all a lie. And maybe we would look at it differently if they hadn't lied about the fact that it was going I to change everything. I wonder if we everything. would, because here's, here's my thing. Superman's death changes everything. Changes everything about comic book death. Mm. Changes everything about Superman. It adds to the world. And also it changes how the public views comic books. Because it used to be that the public viewed comic books, the public at large, the layman... Yeah. Would just look at comic books in a dismissive, kind of almost uh, condescending light. Oh, yeah. look at it's them. It's silly. Over there. Mm -hmm. those, those not movies. <laughs> but then Superman dies. An icon. An American icon. And at that point, I think that shook the monkey tree a little bit to make people go, is Superman as, if not more, American or iconic than things like Paul Bunyan or Johnny Appleseed? Like, is mm. Superman a modern myth? Does mm -hmm. Superman represent something about America? Certainly, Our Lady Peace thought so. Time Magazine. You know, and a yeah. slew of filler news headlines that were speculating about what it means for the 90s and America today now mm -hmm. that Superman has died. I mean, did and he fight for truth, justice in the American way? Bingo! Well, and also, yeah. like, he is, you know, he's been around since the 30s. He's the first superhero. The concept of the superhero at all, at least the way we look at it today, not yeah. counting, like, Grecian myths and so forth. By the time they're breaking the bat, they're like, oh, we already killed Superman, who cares? <laughs> but it already, did sell. Yeah. So, and, so they, um, they sort of proved how important Superman was, right? Because yes. you didn't necessarily know because everyone just sort of took Superman for granted. Well, and the and sales weren't very good. It. So they were like, you know, yeah. people were buying it, people were talking about it, and America was like on the edge of their seat as far as Superman's relevance. Yeah. Suddenly. Right. Well, and like, if you can kill Superman, yeah, all everyone, bets are off. Everyone could get killed. Yeah. Well, uh, no, um, let's see. the American dream could die. <laughs> the fact that people would ask that question, yes, like kind of demonstrates like, oh, I guess comic books are like important in some way, even though nobody was reading them. Yeah, they're like, oh no, I guess this damn thing that I was <laughs> dismissing and ignoring has relevance and impact on the culture. Yeah. Or this thing that I used to read, but I grew out of that. Those are for kids. Yeah, yeah. and suddenly it's like, did I miss the boat? And it's like, yeah, kind of. Yeah, did well, I actually well, kind of want to see what's going on now. Now yeah. that I know that everything's changed, I kind of want to know, like, why? And right. Like, what's going on? And, and what did the change to make way for? Mm -hmm. Now, was it a possibility they were also considering, like, oh, this did very well for Superman, but we're also trying to compete with, like, Marvel and Image. So I mean, maybe we need to get a little darker and grittier. So, yeah. like, let's do it to the bat, too. I mean, there's no way that Image's influence is not felt, especially at DC, since Image was outselling DC at this point. But mm -hmm. everyone's writing their cautionary tales. We, we, we are ourselves. We speculated on yeah. the Image influence on Asriel Batman. Yeah. And I found in my research that no one 
Denny O'Neill got on the record and said, what they're doing at Image is dangerous and <laughs> bad. So let's do this. It was really about shaking things up at Batman, selling more Batman comic books, and maybe having a conversation about Batman's relevance mm. when they decided that they were going to break Batman because that's the plan. The plan was, we're going to break Batman. So we need to do two things. Establish who's going to replace him and establish who's going to break him. So Asriel's invention and Bane's invention are all in service of Nightfall. Right. So Nightfall's looming and they're like, but we don't even have the two essential players of Nightfall yet. So they did Sword of Asriel, which we've also covered, and we went into detail. I'm very happy we, we covered that because now we can talk about the other factor, <laughs> the Bane factor, Vengeance of Bane. From Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan, this book comes out in the same month as The Death of Superman. Oh. Superman 75 drops January 93, Vengeance of Bane, January 93. I think back then it was Prestige, but I don't recall. This is a facsimile edition. Saves me some money. I don't have to ruin this. But it's a facsimile edition, so it has... Or I'll ruin it. Yeah. No, please. It's okay. I have two copies. This is the debut of Bane? This is the debut of Bane. Bane appears in a book called Vengeance of Bane. Right. It's like the sequel to a book that never happened. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's so weird. If called The Return of Bane, you'd be like, where was he the first place? Oh, no. This is the first place. No, this is the first place. And what's funny is they... They make this, which sold great and got people hyped, and there were already conversations. Like, when I was reading comic books, when Nightfall came, I just picked up the latest issue of Batman, and Nightfall began, and this guy Bane was in it. And I was like, who the hell's that? Because I missed this, because I was so busy in Superman. Mm -hmm. So I missed this. But it was pretty impactful, and people were talking about it. And while this issue was out, people were already talking about Nightfall. Which, again, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, what? what do you mean Nightfall? How'd you know this was coming? And of course, because previews existed, because retailers existed, because the internet existed. Right. And their news groups and message boards. Well, it's like, how did you know 5G was coming? It never even came, and you still knew that <laughs> exactly. it was coming. Yeah, but I know that now because, and I, I took it for granted because we live in the future where <laughs> information is ubiquitous and I can just type it, and there right. are leakers and pe- But like, when a person leaks something today, everyone knows about it. Whereas if there was a leak in 1993, 500 people knew. Yeah. yeah. They could keep it contained. It was very contained. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, stuff spread a little more by word of mouth. Very like, much so. Through actual physical interactions. Yeah. Well, and that's because, and for the most part, the majority of the readers weren't on the internet. And there was a leak line that you could dial into <laughs> to get leaks. To get your official leaks. Yes. Yeah. But it was a 900 what? number. So you got to pay for it. I just love the idea of people calling each other. Yeah. Be like, oh, I found out, so I'm going to call these three people, and they're going to call three people. I mean, right? Like, why would you ever be like, oh, yeah, no, I'm just going to rely on this 900 number to make my money. No, it's going to be one guy who runs a comic book store in 1993, so he's doing great, (laughs) and he's just going to pay the leak amount, and then he will charge people money himself for the information he's already gleaned. They would do it indirectly, right? Like... They, yeah, would they would do that, would, and then like you come into the store, and then when you're buying stuff, they'll tell you stuff, yeah. and that's oh, part of the know? reason you come back that's to true. get the this latest. This guy's plugged in. Yeah. So eventually the Bane drops, and you're like, this is Bane, and it introduces everything, all the players. And again, when I was reading Nightfall, I didn't know who the hell these people were, <laughs> and I just assumed they were long-standing members of the Bat family. Nope. All invented right here. here. <laughs> all right here. Do you think this was called Vengeance of Bane to make you think like, wait, does Bane previously exist? Is no. this a long-running character that they're bringing back? Or or an old character from, right. like, the 70s no, they that they're just, bringing back? No way. They're counting on you never having heard of them and hoping that you think they're rad. Mm. It is it is all an invention. I think The Vengeance of Bane is just a really rad title. Because at this point, yeah. DC's already churning out prestige-bound, done-in-one original stories that are super short but also completely self-contained. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is par for the course. You're just like, oh, okay. And... 1993, I, I go back to 1989 to now, Legends of the Dark Knight and other books are just casually introducing you to characters that either will or won't stick around, and you as the reader never know whether they're going to or not. Like, the KG Beast was clearly like a template for Bane. Mm. And they went, eh, like, he's better as a cautionary example. And but since- let's keep that leather. 
We it's, like that leather. Yeah, we like the design and the concept, but not what actually happened. Right, but not the <laughs> Russian angle, because the Iron Curtain's going to fall, so right, let's just that throw that out. Irrelevant. It's too tied into stuff. Mm. It's not original enough. So Bane comes in, and he's like the perfect distilled version <laughs> of all these would-be usurpers, these would-be breakers of the bat. <laughs> so we meet Bane, and we get the origin immediately. So the idea here is that emboldened by the revolution in Cuba, the made-up <laughs> island of Santa Prisa tries to do its own revolution and fails miserably. And all the would-be rebels are slaughtered by the El Jefe in charge. Mm -hmm. Now what we don't know, and what will be established later, but I'll share it anyway because we live in the future, is that Bane's father was a rabble-rouser who knocks up a native of Santa Prisa. But he's not from Santa Prisa? No, he's not. Okay. Now he is Sir Edmonds, who is King Snake, who would be a Robin villain. That is also him. established around the same time. Mm. He's blind. Right. He wasn't then, but he is now. You're as blind as a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, no. So we know that Bane's true father is this English man of wealth and prestige. So we see that the uh, the people are rounded up and summarily slaughtered. One of them is a woman. She just goes to the horrible prison known as Penedoro. Penedoro, of course, would be immortalized in any story about Bane. It, you know, it's a prison from which there is no escape. It's mm -hmm. a hell on earth, blah, blah, blah. I mean, um, the judge is wearing a cowl like he's the executioner. I know, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's heavy handed in its imagery. And because they couldn't catch what we know as Sir Edmonds, they're just like, you can bear the responsibility of his crimes and your child will inherit his sentence. But we're not all terrible. <laughs> if it's a woman, she can go. It's not, so we can stay. That's so, ridiculous. I, it's completely madness. <laughs> so Bane's mother gives birth in prison and Bane is born within the walls of Penodoro. Bane inherits his father's sentence, a life sentence, of course. Does she also inherit? Yeah, oh, she has to stay there too. Okay. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Well, because she was also a rebel. So, you know, you oh. get your own sentence, but your the father of your son will get his sentence carried out by his son. Right. As if, like, if he had property, that would get handed down <laughs> exactly. to the son. Unfortunately, in this case, it's a negative. It still gets handed down. Right. You know, you get the good and the bad. Right. <laughs> so we see that some of the story is narrated by Zombie. Now, Zombie is not a true zombie, but has some kind of glandular issue or whatever, because he's super <laughs> thin and gaunt and uh, has pale skin. And, and he, eats brains. And he does not eat brains. Mm -hmm. he's, that's, that's where it stops. Uh, but he, <laughs> he works in the prison, and he is a prisoner. Okay. That's it. This is how we meet Zombie and everyone else in Bane's crew that we'll see in Nightfall. But Zombie, I don't remember him at all. They're all completely forgettable. Ah. You will remember Trog because, he's, because he looks like some kind of a, a myth and legend character. Mm -hmm. But he's not. He's just crazy looking. Uh, but there Not are troglodyte. I think it's short for troglodyte. Okay. Uh, but there's three members of Bane's crew: Zombie, Trog, and Bird. These are simple characters for a simple time. <laughs> and uh, Fuzzy Bear, of course. <laughs> That's Ozioto or Ozitio, uh, which yeah. is his bear. bear. Uh, Little bear. Yeah. <laughs> so his his bear is his only companion in, the, in this hell, along with his mother, who is dying uh, because she's lost the will to live. Oh, great. That old chestnut. <laughs> I'm so glad Bane wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, no. The narrator explains that she's an island woman who needs sun and freedom, and because she has neither, she wastes away. Yeah, doesn't okay. everyone need sun and freedom? I mean, yes. It's not she specific has scurvy. to islands. <laughs> Like, <laughs> no, the Islanders specifically. Yeah. yeah. But Santa Prisa was... They need you know. sun more than us. So <laughs> while we establish Bane growing up in the prison system, we also meet Zombie. We meet Dr. Ruger, who is also developing a drug in Santa Prisa. Oh. Venom. Right. Of course, we will meet Venom in the Legends of the Dark Knight story, Batman Venom, in which Batman gets addicted to uh, performance-enhancing drugs, a special one that was developed in this area... Venom. So uh, is it weird that Bane's father is King Snake? Right. 
and he and, uses venom. I mean, I don't think that's weird. I think that's poetic. I think that's brilliant, mm. especially because they don't know that's the case yet. <laughs> You know, we don't even, when we meet King Snake, we don't even know there's a connection with Bane. It's just kind of like, oh cool, new big character. Mm. And when I say big, I mean physically, not like popular. So they retcon him to be Bane's dad later? I think so. Uh, I think it's a pure retcon. But so at this time, they don't mention King Snake anymore. Nope, they just say it's his just father like his was, father. And I, but, I, but Denny O'Neill is like playing it up. Now obviously Denny O'Neill didn't write this, but he did develop the idea and with the bad offices was like, we're gonna break Batman, so we gotta invent Azrael, we gotta invent Bane, we gotta set up a couple of big characters so that we can establish that Batman's getting tired and slower, so it's believable that he does break. Yeah, a question about that, getting tired and slower. Yeah. Uh, did that just, did they just like stop that? Or is he like permanently tired and slower? It depends on who's writing him. Chip mm. Zdarsky's Batman right now, as the taping of the show, does have him call himself old man. Mm -hmm. And that he is getting slower. Uh, but I think it's more believable that he is older and slower now than in 1993 because he has five Robins. <laughs> We see that Bane has no playground except for the prison itself. He learns every inch, every nook and cranny of this prison. Bane isn't technically a prisoner yet. He's a prisoner only by virtue of the fact that he can't leave, but he is not, not like, like subjected cell. to the prison system. Like right. his mother is, but he is free reign. He can run around and play with his little bear. <laughs> He's being raised by the prison. Yes, the prison, <laughs> the prison is his <laughs> jungle gym. Yeah, or his dad, and his or his parents. father. <laughs> Especially uh, once she goes. Yep. Inevitably, his mother does die. Zombie tends to her. <laughs> I thought you were going to say eats her. Zombie consumes her. Consumes her, as, as his, zombies his name, are want to do. As his name suggests. <laughs> no. Uh, he tends to her while she passes. Uh, but Bane is now like six. Probably closer to, I want to say he's Bruce Wayne's age when his parents were murdered. Okay. To keep it kind like of eight parallel. or something? Like, so eight. Yeah. yeah. That works. But he's hardened, and he's like, well, she was weak, and so she died. That makes sense. <laughs> That's how it works in prison. Yeah. That's all I know. And because... Was she weak for eight years? She was wasting away for eight years. Yeah. So, yeah. She's getting weaker and weaker. Uh, she doesn't get a proper burial. They, I want to say that this is the, the, the par for the course in Penyadoro, but they specifically say she was denied a Christian burial. But I want to assume everyone at Penyadoro who dies is denied <laughs> right. a Christian burial. I, I would assume that for anyone born on Santa Prisa. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, they feed her to the sharks. They feed her to the sharks. I, I assume everyone on that island is just like, I want to get eaten by sharks when I die. I don't know if I want that's that, a thing. but I assume that's just how it works. Because it's like we're an island, we have limited resources, limited space. <laughs> We can't afford to have a graveyard. Yeah. That's a good question. What normally happens on islands? Do right? they have traditions of burying people on islands, or is it more common to, like, cremate people? Yeah. I that's mean, a in question. a way, you're still putting nitrates back into the soil. Right? Yeah, that's true, but you're also, if you're on an island, you have limited space. Like, in Japan, I know that, like, those graveyards, like, they're really like, stacked up on top yeah, of each other. Yeah, yeah, so they go like, three-dimensional. Right? And it's mm. like, at a, at a certain point, you're going to run out of room for graves. Well, that's if you're assuming like it's in a casket. If they just like bury them so they decompose, yeah. it's not as bad. Or if they have cremation, that's true. Yeah. So anyway. What uh, they do is they, they uh, debone you, much like a turkey <laughs> on Thanksgiving. Yeah. You just pop a couple of things, uh -huh. then you, the skeleton slides right out. Yeah. The, the bones get cremated yes. so that they're dust. But, but then the flesh, the flesh goes into a box, all the organs. but a smaller one. Oh no, it just goes right in the ground. Oh, just goes right into a mass grave, if you will. That's pretty horrific. So Bane goes to meet with the like leader of the prison who's just like, yeah, your mom's dead, so you're a prisoner now. So welcome to I, the system. What? I was a prisoner before. <laughs> yeah, I no, inherited but, my father's sentence. Right, Do but, I also inherit the rest of hers? No, it's just... Yeah, what does the fact that his mom died have to do with when his sentence his, starts? I, I think that's what it is. I think it's like, well, if your mom like protects you and raises you, but once she's gone, now you are... A, a, a warden of the state. What if she died when he was like one? Right. Then he would have thrown him in a cell. Like, there's no way he wouldn't have just done That's that. That's a one-year-old? As a, You'll see more of this like insane behavior <laughs> where it's like, yeah, what, what even is this plan? So Bane goes into general population, goes into his cell, and he meets his first like prisoner, fellow prisoner inmate, who is like, yeah, you need some protection, but I'll, I'll, you're going to be my friend. We're going to be friends. Look, it's 1993. Yeesh. It's got to get approved by the co by the commas code. We can't say what this man plans to do with this child, but we mm. all know what's coming. Look at that nose ring. It's sinister as hell. So, <laughs> when and his teeth. Look at all those gaps. Right? So, Bane knows what's coming for him manana. Uh, but we see that Bane is not without protection. 
Zombie doesn't have direct access to him, but Zombie is sympathetic to Bane's plight. Um, but the next day, they open up the cells, people are released, and his creepy, scary neighbor comes out, and he's like, okay, we're gonna be friends now. And he just comes up behind him. Jesus. Along, uh, on, on the upper floor, like top level of the balcony. Yeah. But then Trog comes out. So we meet Trog. And Trog's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we meet Trog here? Yeah. Trog is another prisoner. Is Trog like a senior citizen by the time we get to know him in the books? No, everyone ages a while, but no one changes physically. <laughs> Except for Bane. <laughs> Except for Bane. Because <laughs> Bane has to go into prison for 10 years to become Bane. Right. This man looks like he's already in his 50s. Yep, I agree. Yes, yeah. Yeah, no. he does. He looks like Ernest Borgnine. It's like, <laughs> what is this? So Trog punches the assailant. But the assailant bumps into Bane and knocks Bane like three flights down. Oh. And so Bane just hits the pavement. And dies. <laughs> he goes into a coma. Mm. He almost dies. But according to the narration, he does die. Like the boy dies. Right. The boy he was. The innocence that he right. would have retained for as long as this man would have let him. And Bane uh, is born. Bane is not born yet. Ah. But the boy is dead. Oh, that's why. It's because Osoito leaves. That's right. Well, he, he runs away and then makes way for his adult self. Bane's adult self comes before him and is like, I'm you, I'm the perfect version of you. The physical apex of what you can achieve. What are all those tubes running in your back? <laughs> don't worry about <laughs> that. I don't have those yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't have them yet. But he does look exactly like Bane will eventually. That's what Bane looks like? Yeah, without the mask and everything, yeah. I had no idea. I mean, it is a child's projection of what he imagines he'll be like someday, but also that's what he looks like too. Well, I so, imagine he also is imagining himself as Arnold Schwarzenegger, because who wouldn't at that age? Naturally. Although, I don't, know if, I don't know if Bane knows who Arnold is at this point. <laughs> He's lived a really sheltered life. He, he doesn't even know how to read or write yet, but he will. Inevitably. I guess it's unlocking things that Bane may have gleaned through, you know, subconscious or... Maybe it's things his mom said. His mom said, yeah. Mm. But he's like, or other you're destined for greatness. You have to achieve it. You know, you're going to be the, like, ruler. But there's only one thing that stands in your way. Bad man. He reveals this giant bat. What? There's he's, a, just, he's just afraid of bats. He's afraid of bats. Uh, okay. Well, he and Batman have something in common then. Exactly. But so this is the explanation, this is the explanation for why, why he, he, he becomes fixates obsessed on Batman. with. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's not. It's not foreshadowing where like, the, where it's like a coincidence. Like no, the, he he is afraid of bats. I mean, it's not like Batman's going back in time. We never and, see like, the bat fear until now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more like his adult self goes. I bet you didn't know this. But you're afraid of bats. Well, he also <laughs> you're you're going to fight Batman in the future. So let me just put this in your brain right now. <laughs> it's need, like this loop that yeah. like, goes back on itself. You can tell that like this is, yeah, they're, they're building towards Nightfall. They're like, yeah. we need him to want to hate Batman. But why would he if he's in the middle of effing nowhere and doesn't even know who Batman is? Once you beat this bat, then you will be second to no man. So it's like, okay, it is foreshadowing. You need to beat the totemic man-shaped bat. Well, then that he has to come beat for you. Uh, Batman Shaman. Right. <laughs> now, this is 10 years before the present. Mm -hmm. So He meant man bat. He has to fight <laughs> man bat. He got it all wrong. Yeah. I wish that were the case. They just like, you read the, you read the prophecy wrong. Or there is no prophecy. It was your brain bleeding to death. <laughs> Anyway, so we established this is how he gets his obsession with Batman, is that his adult self shows up as a ghost and says, you gotta fight Batman, but not Batman, because you don't know who that is. There's a big bat, and he's scary, and it frightens you, but when you kill it, then you'll be top dog. I'm not frightened. No, he frightened. he frightened you. He, he frightened <laughs> you, and you're scared, That's okay? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> All right, fine, this is the future me. I'm scared. Oh, look at me. Good. Making him a boot. Now but, beat him. But the fear of the bat does rouse him from his coma, and then... Uh, Zombie aids him in his quest. Uh, so Bane then goes to visit the would-be assailant in his cell and then shivs him to death. We just see right. him like sinisterly hold a shiv and watch as the would-be assailant sweats and dies. And then dies off panel. Uh, so then Bane, I guess, just takes a nap in this man's bed along with his corpse <laughs> and waits for the orderlies to come and retrieve him. They show up and they're just like, Ha! Madre de Dios! There's blood everywhere, and there's a dead corpse, and this little boy, and he's bathed in the blood of his enemy. See, this is where Bane screws up. 
Right. Because Bane should have carved the guy open, and then snuck inside his body, and, and when they feed him to the sharks, busted it out in the waters, and it's going to escape. Yeah. yeah, they just punch his way through the sharks. I mean, listen, we are foreshadowing what's going to happen in this book, but it isn't in the corpse of a man. So the warden of the prison is like, sweet Jesus, you're going away forever. Like, you're going into solitary. Mm. I can't even look at you. So they put him into chains, but they're man chains. You, so they I'm don't sorry. fit him. You can't look at me because I killed someone? No, you killed him grisly. Yeah, they killed him, like, he killed him, like, with, with like, and bathed in, in, yeah, in, in what came out of him. Right. You are you are inhuman. Like, yeah, you're you're reveling in it. Right. They write on his prison door, way. Annie Male, when they put him into... Maybe he bit Solitary. him and stuff too, because it's blood coming around his mouth. Might, there's blood in his face. He just like went to town, right? On but they they, they, like they shackle him with man shackles, so like he can electively take them off he whenever just, he wants to. But they're like, you will grow into these shackles. Mm. But like, obviously, I'm not gonna wear them, dipshit. But <laughs> no, it's it, like symbolic. It's symbolic. It's a, but like, thing, is, we have to put them on you to take you away. Right, but that's how this plan goes. Like, that's how this prison operates. I wanted to say you will grow into them, okay? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. But also, all they're set falling up for that off line. you right now. Yeah, don't worry about that. The cell will keep you contained. Yeah. Well, don't worry. You, you keep them on <laughs> until theater. they fit. Right. Yeah, yeah no, I'm going to keep checking in. Are I, you still wearing those damn things? If you take them off, I'm just going to put them back on. And eventually, they will fit. It's incredible. They, they throw him in a solitary, and then they never look at him again for 10 years. Oh, wow. Just leave him in there. How do they feed him? Well, they put food in there, but no. they don't. No. 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 So, what? Obviously. You can't the, do that. The well, room is solitary. Why not? It's slow yeah. death. So, yeah, exactly. So, uh, the, 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 the word of what he's done and the fear in the warden's voice reverberate throughout the prison. People are like, mm. holy crap, what is that thing? Oh, it is Animale. Yeah, it's, it's Bane. <laughs> no, and, no, Animale. No, no, it is Bane because the warden then names him. He says, you are oh. the Bane of this prison. Hmm. So had, for killing one guy, well, uh, so in, in so a gross, gross way, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right. No, I, like, I kind of want to see the body. I know. In order to really get it, we don't. We only see the aftermath. Yeah, we see right. the, the the look on the boy's face. So then they put him in the cell, and the cell is actually we've seen the cell before because Tom King brings it back in the right. uh, in, in his run on Batman, where Bane puts him in that cell and is like, "You have to deal with the cell." I think it's like three paces long mm. okay and it is below sea level so at night the sea comes and fills the cell now thankfully there are bars above him so the sea level brings him up and he can breathe through the bars uh, but it like this is a horror show this this, yeah. this boy is in the cell and like the crabs come for him and i love the image of crabs coming for him because like rats do too and we get that and he kills the rats and he eats them like batman would in the frank oh Miller perfect movies. that's how batman gets the idea but like <laughs> well the crabs would be a much better protein but the, i know and the crab you will but unless it's similar yeah but it's the crabs come from i, I did the visual <laughs> of like you're in this cell it's only lit by moonlight and you're a little boy and then just Hundreds of crabs. That's <laughs> that. Yeah, they're all gonna pinch you. Yeah. Thank you. Right new, in the dick. Yeah, new nightmare. Thanks. Yeah. Well, they also like eat dead things. Exactly. Like, they're scavengers. Yeah. I'm they're waiting for him. Yeah. They pick him apart. Are you, are you ready yet? Can I just start nibbling on you? You're not, exactly. You're dead. Yeah. But uh, when the cell fills, like he hunts for fish, and I'm like, mm. I mean, you've got rats and and crabs, but yeah, like, yeah. all right, he hunts. Fish are for a lot harder to catch. And and clean. Yeah. But whatever. Well, so, he doesn't worry clean. about that. He's them raw and, and wriggling. And when the cell fills up, the rats are swimming on top with him. Yes. The fish are swimming below him, and the crabs are on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got surf and turf from every level. <laughs> Years go by, and he like develops a whole new system of uh, meditation, where he just essentially just goes into his own mind. And but while he's meditating, he is visited by like visions of the bat, and so he imagines himself like killing the bat, and then becoming the man that he promised himself that he'd be one day. So 10 years later, they let him out and they're like, uh, he's alive, crap. Imagine them going down with a different prisoner for solitary. Yeah, they're like, they right, open it up, we're gonna, oh, oh my God, oh, you're still, still here? alive. <laughs> I thought you'd be a skeleton that would scare the guy we're putting in here, but all right, <laughs> we'll let you out. It's been 10 years. Yeah, why did they let him out? Right, they it's, shouldn't. Like it's 10 years, you left him there to die. It's right. not like, well, you're- Well, the sentence it, is up. The sentence is up. It would, and we are a nation of laws. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you're not. You're clearly not. You put him in there as an animal. Why wouldn't you just kill him if you didn't want did, him around? He inherited him? his father's prison sentence? Like that's, 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 that's insane. Okay, did the warden die? No. Okay, so 
There is not a chance in hell they would let him out. He's nope. not being released. They'd be like, oh my God, he's still alive. Shoot him. Right. Shoot him now. No, so they let him out and they bring him back into the prison system and he's a legend and they're all like, woo. So then he meets up with Bird. Oh wait, he's still in prison. Oh yeah, no. Oh, he's no, they don't out let him of out. solitary. They let him out I of see. solitary. Okay. But even still, like it's still a problem. You've created a legend now. Yeah. You've created a myth. Yeah, so don't do that. He meets he's up not with... gonna know how to interact with people. He does because he meditates. So he meets <laughs> Bird. And Bird is an American who was a lawyer from Gotham who like screwed up and was sent here. Not through the Gotham legal system. Oh yeah. But he through was an the mafia or something. He was an yeah. underworld lawyer. I see. Uh, and he also had a knack for birds. What does that mean? It means he can train them, talk to them, whatever. He just, he sent the bird. That's his power. Yes. That's He's like the penguin guy. except his birds fly. Penguin does not have an ability to talk like, to or no, work with birds. That has uh, never been a thing except for that one movie. Yeah, in the end, <laughs> exactly. Batman returns, and even then, he doesn't command them. They respect him for some reason, and they carry him off. They, that's what I'm saying. Is they, they, well, you know what? That's like, all right. Well, we'll give him one. It does happen at the end. Before yeah. that, he's controlling them with machines. With machines and mind control. But in the comic books, Penguin just takes his idea of theming from the birds. He is not great at training birds. Bird is great at that. That's why his name is Bird. So anyway, Bird is like, dude, you are, you're going places, Bane. I want in. And Bane's like, what would I have to do to get the favor of Bird? You're going places. You got out of solitary and now you're here. Right, where I have been for 10 years. Uh, by That's the way, going places. Bird also sent like that pretty bird to go visit Bane, I guess to like oh. ingratiate himself with Bane. But uh, he goes. Did he whisper to the bird? Did the bird give him feedback? We never see like, that. Like, oh, he told me about you. <laughs> he's like Gandalf. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. So he's not a talking bird. He's not rat catcher. <laughs> okay, so this is this is a this is a guy who can talk to his bird, but the birds don't communicate. This back. guy no, has they don't. Realistic good. affinity for birds. Yes, like he, a person might in the real world. He is good at training any bird. That's it. Any bird? Yeah, because he also trains like vultures and sparrows. Okay, that's bordering on a little unrealistic, but okay. Yeah. All right. Ostriches. Literally, Bane just asks about it and he says, I have a knack for them. That's all Moving the explanation on. we get. His name is Bird. <laughs> he has a real name too, but like we call him Bird. All right. So anyway, Do other people call him Bird or Bane calls him Bird? Bane calls him Bird, but also so does Bane's crew. He does have a real name, but okay. he never interacts with anybody who would use it. I see. I just, I just wondering because I see the picture of the bird. It says bird on it. Like, yeah. Is that when he learns the word bird? Yeah, I think. And then he's that, like, "You're a bird guy. I'll call you bird because that's like the only word I fucking know." Yeah, because I think that bird sends a bird to Bane with a picture of a bird with the word bird on it. But the narration explains that Bane has no idea what that word means mm -hmm. or how to read it. But so it is whatever. his first word. But it is his first word, and Bane learns to read thanks to the tutelage of Bird, and uh, so Bane exhausts the prison library and then uses Bird's connections to get them to smuggle in more books of every type. And so Bane becomes learned, and he learns like, you know, he reads the Count of Monte Cristo and Lord of the Flies. Of course he reads but he, the Count of Monte I mean, Cristo. I'm just making that up. I'm sure he does, though. I'm sure, it's the well, first, yeah. I'm sure it's his favorite book. But he also learns, like, law and strategy and, like, you know, I should he learned that from Bird. Well, Bird does teach him law and stuff like that. But he also has, like, legal books that can help him with, uh, you yeah. know, fill in the gaps. Does Bird also talk, talk to him about the Batman? Yes, because Bird is from Gotham. Right. And so, actually, they, they have a conversation about it where he's just like, yeah, Gotham is the best place. Like anyone can make their fortune there because he's like a, he's a criminal, he's a scumbag. Right. So he's like, it's awesome there. <laughs> it's awesome except for this one guy who kicks our butts all the time. Yeah, well that comes up. So Bane trains and learns, so he hones his mind and his body. And so he becomes, you know, even bigger and more awesome than he ever was. Um, but of course, like as he gets bigger and his legend spreads, more would-be usurpers challenge him. So because this is a, prison of laws they have like a fighting pit here I guess because he's like well you've been formally challenged so you have to fight in the arena <laughs> but the arena seems to be only facilitated by prisoners because Bane only uses shivs but anyway Bane kills this guy it seems to be like in the laundry room does he bathe in his blood again and they call him on him all no back in his oh, God, it again. It. no 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 he's not a boy it's not impressive anymore now oh we forgot this expected. is on him all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no it's Bane wow got all these different like names it's stupid so anyway uh Bane asks Bird to explain to him after he shivs this dude, tell me more about Gotham, and he says, oh, it's a ripe piece of fruit. It's like a 
place that's <laughs> perfect for the for the taking. Like, or he goes, and who rules Gotham City? And he goes, oh, that's tough because like, there's, okay, <laughs> well, th there have been like mob bosses, but Batman kind of takes all those. I guess Batman kind of rules Gotham City. Like, if you have to really put my my feet to the flame, it is not think about like the mayor. No. <laughs> Yeah. Or the board of right. selectmen or whatever. <laughs> and yeah. upon hearing it, Bane just shits himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, he's just like, yeah, uh, Batman. He's like, Batman? Batman, you say? That rolls right in line with my obsession. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, nobody knows who he is. He just shows up and he beats up the most powerful people in Gotham. Like, And everyone's afraid of him. And those who aren't are the criminally insane. Hmm. And he's like, hmm. So now I have a name for the thing I have to beat to become who I was born to be. Oh my God, I love that picture. <laughs> I know, of, of Batman ruling Gotham. Terrorizing oh. Gotham. Well, his mind is inflamed in imagination. <laughs> so he's like, okay, I've got to go to Gotham and I've got to beat Batman. And Bird's like, sure, but first you have to leave. <laughs> right. And that's why I'm friends with you because I know that if anyone could, it's you. So Bane just starts a big prison fight. And the prison seems to like those because it thins the numbers and makes things less problematic. <laughs> but Bane is killing like way too many people. Like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, oh, whoa, sorry, whoa, whoa. You might kill me. Exactly, so Bane takes out a lot of guards. You have to take understand, him down. Like, if I kill more people, there's more food and resources to go around. It's true. Everyone can get their own cell. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's true, but I feel like you're gonna kill like everyone until there's no one left, so. <laughs> I would take you down. Meanwhile, this wouldn't is a, it be nice to retire? I think so. <laughs> so in the infirmary, yeah. they also do venom experiments mm, for the government, naturally. not the U.S. government, thank God. Right. But the local Santa Prison government. Right. And the like warden of Penadoro is like, you know, what are you doing here? Because they keep like injecting these people, and then they just they just die. Like their right. hearts oh, give out. Lost another one. And they're like, what? The, who who cares? As long as we do what we need to do, just yeah. keep giving us. Don't bodies. worry about it. Exactly. Yeah. But Zombie, who works with the infirmary and cleans up and stuff, he is keyed into this. So he's very much aware of this drug they call Venom. Mm. And the scientists are basically like, if you want to help, besides criticizing us for what we're doing here, uh, give us a subject whose heart won't give out when we keep like injecting them with our shit. Yeah, bring me more bodies. And the warden's like, oh, I've got a guy for that. Mm -hmm. And so they sign up Bane. And so Bane goes through the, the injections and he doesn't die. And so they're like, this guy's perfect for what we have planned. The end game for our Venom plan. Yeah, for and our super villain plan. Yes. <laughs> well, for our super soldier plan. Right. And so they <laughs> like screw in like brain intake valves into Bane's head and set up this whole like system of how we know Bane's going to be. Right. Because it's not like Venom Venom. Like Venom is a performance enhancer, but there's also like a cocktail involved. It's a special cocktail that Zombie steals, like an example of, so he can break it down and figure out the formula and then learn it and know it and replicate it. Oh, is Zombie a chemist? Yeah, sure. <laughs> he is. <but laughs> he is like, now. But he is now. And so, because Zombie needs to make the Venom, the right, somebody's gotta make it. Someone's gotta make it so that Bane can use it in Nightfall. <laughs> So right. don't forget, this is all, <laughs> this is all in service. All in service to an event that we're setting up in 1993. Yeah, it's precursor. He's not using the venom yet. No, but he. Well, they've injected him with like things venom adjacent or venom specifically, but not like the new stuff, not yeah. the good stuff. <laughs> what are they calling it? Poison? Right. Well, that's and that's what gave way to what they were going to call this character when he first started, called Doc Toxin. Oh my. God. Awful. And they went back to the drawing board. Well, he's not a doctor, first off. <laughs> no, he's not. Well, he's an honorary well, doctor he, he, he learned so much. He is a genius, though. Yeah. He is a genius. Uh, but yeah, they went, nah, let's save Doc Toxin and use Bane <laughs> instead. <laughs> I'm glad they made that choice. Me too. Yeah, that would have been terrible. Oh no, Batman's greatest nemesis, Doc Toxin. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> ah, that sucks. Why did we do that? That has no staying power whatsoever. So then Zombie meets up with Bane and they concoct a scheme. And so all Bane has to do is go into a vegetative state willfully. He just forces his heart to stop. Oh, he should just jump off a three-story ledge again. I know. Hmm. But uh, instead he just meditates his way into a coma or into flatlining. And so they go like, all right, well, time to do the thing we do with dead bodies and whip them into the ocean. <laughs> But before we do, let's plug two in his brain. Pop up. Right. Oh <laughs> no, I didn't count sure. on that. But uh, so they whip his body into the ocean and uh, the sharks come for him. And then he busts out of the body bag. He kills a couple sharks and then returns to the prison. 
Nice. You're like, whoa! How does he kill the sharks? Uh, he does that thing that Godzilla does to that one Tyrannosaurus Rex, where he overextends their jaw. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. But there are teeth in there. Yeah. <laughs> he should lose his fingers. I agree. He gets in between them. He, nope. There's rows. Yeah, he slots right in between. I know. Two, he, or maybe maybe he wraps around the gum just in front of the right? teeth. Right. He's naked, by the way. Like there's yeah. he can't even use anything that came with him to protect himself from these teeth. I'd love to know what a shark's bite strength is, just to be like, oh, that's absolutely not. I mean, the reality is a, a shark's bite. There's no freaking way it isn't stronger than a man. So <laughs> but Bane, not stronger than Doc Toxin. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that classic character. So Bane goes to the warden first and uh, mm. beats him up, frees Trog, Bird, and Zombie, and then basically we, we just shorthand all this. Like mm. he goes to the prison warden's room and like wraps his hands around his throat and then cut to the yard where the three Bane helpers have been freed already and the helicopter that they called that they needed or else they'd kill the warden has been delivered. Mm. So the, oh. like, the, the skipping the, ahead. Skipping ahead. Yeah. How you, do they do you that? Know, look, he got the drop on the warden, so he gets a helicopter. Yes. I don't have to fucking I don't need to spell it out for you. The whole time. Yeah. You gotta understand. This is the only warden we could ever have. Right. Well I guess because the warden is like a tyrant like this is kind of like, like its own little country. A friend of the government, Definitely. probably. Well, he They're wears like, oh, military fatigues. Yeah. I assume he's also like a general in the Santa Prison army. But uh, I get the feeling that if Santa Prison knew he was taken captive, they'd be like, "That's fine, too well, bad, oops. right?" So they take him Destroy away. Destroy the whole prison, right? Blow it up. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> so the the helicopter takes off, and I love the narration for Zombie where he says, "Even if we died that night, it was still a victory." Uh, also, it rained. So it's like, it's just this, this daring prison break under the cover of darkness and a torrential downpour. So then they, 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 they get carried away. And as they're over the sharks, Bane's like, bye. And then pushes the warden with his bear into the ocean to be consumed by sharks. Then they go to Gotham. And Bird, who of course is like an underworld lawyer, uses his contacts to get them fake IDs and a place to stay. So they hole up in like what is essentially a really nice penthouse apartment. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Where Zombie can then concoct his new, you know, venom for Bane. Wait, and, so they didn't make him a super soldier? No. They just talked about doing that. Yes, and, and drilled they put holes the in his ports in him. Yes. So Zombie develops the, the, the venom that they need to make him the super soldier. So what was with all the people's hearts giving out? Oh, it's, it's too strong. Like the yeah. stuff they were making when they were developing the serum that Zombie would inevitably recover and give to Bane, they were working it out and working out like the the right like dosage. But also they needed to demonstrate that Bane was so strong that right. he could handle. Not just anybody can even handle regular venom. Yes, but, let but, alone but Bane can handle modified, it enhanced by Zombie venom or whatever. Yes, that's right. So Zombie and company actually, I believe Trog, despite his name, is a whiz with computers and, and technology, builds. <laughs> all of Bane's accoutrements, like his his venom delivery system and the ports that go into his brain and stuff. So they're, they're all supervillains in some way. Like yes. one of them it has an impossible, can train any bird power. Yes, the other one does machines. One of them does machines and, and one of them is like chemist. a super chemist. Yes, that's right. Yeah, if, uh, if Bird wasn't also an underground lawyer at this point, I get the feeling he'd be kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> now you'd be surprised how useful <laughs> birds are. So while they're doing all that, Bane just watches TV and gets really like angry. At like you know, <laughs> culture, <laughs> right? Oh, well, he's making God. plans and stuff. I'm loving it. like, oh shit, I have TV now. I don't oh, need never to take mind. Over I don't need this. The Batman. This is great. Right? I have potato chips oh. and TV. I'm good. I just do this for the rest of my life. Yeah, this is sweet. Perfect. Have you guys heard of Al Bundy? He's hilarious, and I want to be him. Bane. Oh, Bane, no. just get up. We got to take over Gotham. He's gone, man. No, <laughs> yeah, it's over. <laughs> no. Hey, could you get nacho cheese to go through these tubes into my brain? <laughs> They give him his costume. And that like dope mask he wears, no, 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 no. That's practical. He needs that mask. It's part of the whole Venom delivery system. It's not just what? awesome looking. Yeah, how else are the tubes stay in? Yeah. Why does it look like that though? Oh, because it's cool. <laughs> I see. So then they go to Jimmy No-Nos. And Jimmy No-Nos is the guy who sent Bird up the river and inevitably to 
Penudoro. Oh. But also he's like a made man. He's a connected guy in the Gotham underworld. And so they go and they uh, meet Jimmy No-Nose by beating the hell out of people. And oh, they show up. No nose, as in like he doesn't have a nose. That's right. Okay. Mm. Uh, but I love they reveal themselves. And here they are in the outfits they will wear in Nightfall. You know, so Zombie right. has like These a are suit. Our costumes. Yes, they're costumes. This is amazing. But I love Jimmy No Nose just goes, Okay, so what's your sh- what's your what's your gimmick? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm a mobster in Gotham. The only way I'm alive is because I don't have a nose and I have like a special attachment for it and I have a whole name. Like that's, right? You know, like right. Two-Face, he's got two faces. We all got it. <laughs> so I got no nose. That's my thing. Right, what's Except your, you what you still you, have a nose. Yeah, so what's your, yeah. It's a fake nose. I'm though. making it up. I don't really care. I don't want to kill Batman. I just want to make money. But I don't want to die or get killed by the Joker. So I got to have a stupid like camouflage on, you know? Love it if he actually had a nose. This is just a weird metal cover he puts over it. I, I got to have a yeah, thing. Yeah, no nose. I have a gimmick, yeah. yeah. They I, don't take it seriously in Gotham unless you funny. are weird in some way. Right? So, you know, they're like, what do you want? And Bane's like, tell me about Batman. And he's like, okay, so what? You love Batman? You want to you wanna, you wanna fight him? You seem like you want to fight people? And he's like, no, I want to kill him. And they're like, oh, okay. Oh, well, oh way no, to get you, particular. You but, and everybody else. What a shocker. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think the ventriloquist just tried that. <laughs> so here's the thing. Like, if you want to meet Batman, you got to, like, start some shit. You know, it's got to be, like, a big thing. Because Batman doesn't notice the small stuff. You got to make it a big deal. Mm. I know. Steal me $3 million. Right. <laughs> How about I murder one of the biggest gangsters in the city? Yeah, but not now. <laughs> But he's like, oh, look, I, I'll help you out. You know, actually, I'm trying to muscle in on somebody else's territory. We can, we'll, we'll be partners and kill those guys. And Bane's like, partners? You mean like you were with Bird? Oh, and Bird's man. like, hi. And he's like, yeah, I'm oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Colossimo, what's going on, man? That's his name. Colossimo? Yeah. That's his last name. Sweet. Birdie Colossimo. He's like, oh. Oh. Yeah, I didn't recognize you in the whole. Uh, Alive thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, the hawk! <laughs> That's exactly what happens. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> so, and then we cut. We have we do a hard cut. It's like the predator was here. Everyone's like strung up and like oh, slaughtered. God. And my God, it looks like the bane of Santa Prisa did this. Yeah, uh, Bullock and Montoya are investigating, and you know Bullock is callous as always. You know, he's like, couldn't happen to a nicer fellow. Ha <laughs> ha. And so they're like, all right, well, let's let's get the coroner here, and uh, let's call the commissioner too. He's going to want to weigh in on this too. Right. He'll make a few calls. And so uh, then Batman shows up, you know, right. and he meets them outside. And while he's there, you know, Bane and his rowdy friends are on the <laughs> roof watching him. And they're like, oh, there he is. Go get him. Come on. Get him. Bane, you can do it. Come on. And Bane's like, no. Nightfall hasn't happened yet. Right. We're not ready. I can't just go get him, okay? I gotta wait. I gotta wait until at least like 20 parts in the Nightfall before I, I break him. Study his I gotta mannerisms. study it. Yeah, he's gotta study his moves. I have set. to learn my prey. Yes. And it's great because, like, for, as far as these guys are concerned, they're like, I think Bane's punking out. Yeah. You know, like, they, Come they, on, man. they right accuse him later. Him. They're like, you you didn't even kill him when you had the chance. Yeah. Goes, no, I let him live. There's a difference. And they're like, sure. Okay. Right, yeah, sure there is. Why, though? I feel like you're not going to kill him ever. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> I feel like you'll have him completely at your mercy. Right. And still won't kill him. And still won't. And then we'll be like right back like, where we start. You'll severely wound him in a way where he can't. Fight back, yeah, and like somehow he won't be dead afterward. Though. Yeah, that's how I. That's that's, that's what the, I'm afraid is happening yeah, here, and I'm just. I want I want to know ahead of time. I don't I don't like to get in bed with anybody that I don't have a full disclosure on. <laughs> All I'm saying is, isn't crippling him better? I mean, no, like, no. I okay. So I'm from here. You're like you're you're not even from was, around here. Was was crippling you better? Because <laughs> you were. Because remember when you were in that coma? <laughs> you know what if. What if an older, more wizened version of himself comes before him in his dreams and gives him something to beat your ass with? Oh, what is it going to say? E e e. Batman goes to talk to Gordon. Gordon get, tells him that like they were making a play for these these brothers, these like these these gangster brothers. We don't really have anything on them, so we can't go in. But that's never stopped you. So Batman goes to them while he's like running across the rooftop. Bane's there. He's like, Ooh. And, but Batman like. Thinks he hears something, so he turns around, turns on night vision, doesn't see anything. He's like, okay. Mm. So Batman's like, Batman's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But. So is Bane. Yeah, so Bane. Super Bane's better right oh, now. Oh. So Bane, you know, it's follows chaos. him. Exactly. So then we go to the brothers, and the brothers are fucking confusing and weird. But it doesn't matter because they're going to die. Uh, but, like, they work out. How many of them are there? There are three. Oh. There are two Too brothers. Bad. 
Oh, just two and brothers. Just two. And, and a third and then brother. Another and then brother. another brother. But the two brothers are like jacked and the other one is not. And so they have more of a kinship than the other brother. But, but the they're two all brothers. killed by Bane, so who cares? <laughs> they're not gonna make it. Right, it's like when they, when every Batman versus Predator story, there's four of them by the way, where like, we meet another mobster. Oh no, literally the plot of Batman Predator 2 is Let's have every issue be another mobster who's really distinct and has a lot of personality. And then the predator kills them. Why bother? What are we wasting time for? But we're world building. Because we're giving you subjects. Yeah. yeah. There's one issue where they kill like six in a row. And they're all specific. One's yeah. like a James Bond Well, because we're following the Predator formula. It's a mobster movie. You gotta get the mobster right, but character there's like 10 in of there. them. We don't need that. <laughs> I got it. After and, the and first also, three. And also, when Predator shows up, we can throw the script away. Right, you're that's done also, now. That's what shows yeah, you it's how a Predator grizzly movie. Gotham is. Look at all of these mobsters. Look at how, how specific and themed they all are. Okay, but let's, these guys work out a lot. Let's get back to the brothers, though. Yeah, but the brothers, <laughs> you're gonna want to know about them because they have a strong bond. Yeah, are two of the brothers, out. are they just regular brothers? Yeah, they are okay. They are regular brothers. They're all, all three of them are regular brothers, but oh, okay. two of them have better genetics because they're like more juiced up. Oh. Yeah. You don't want to know about it here, but uh, but then Batman, he shows up. What are you going to do then? <laughs> so they fight. And, but like the cool. brothers are set up in like a warehouse, but they also have like a TV with a couch and it's like huge. Yeah, it's like, a, also, it's like it's a clubhouse. Like, yeah, but it's also like really high up. But it also has like barbed wire fences. Like, what the? What, what's going on here? <laughs> this looks like an industrial. Just a little complex. confusing. Yeah, is like, all. like your base is in a former like factory. Yeah, you know how uh, like in GTA Five, there's just open construction sites. Yeah, just put down a couch and a TV in one of those. Right. It, it, it's like turning a mall into like a, a living community. <laughs> like, well, we all have these empty warehouses from like when we used to be an industrial place. So just turn them into places to live. But don't fill them with things that you would use to live in them. Just have the things you would normally have in a normal sized place. Well, yeah, in a massive sized place. <laughs> then it's not squatting. Right. And that's what they're. But they're not squatting. You have full ass weights. Like, look at. Yeah, it's that, like nice. There are hundreds of pounds of weights. You have to bring them up flights of stairs. Are there fucking. I mean, well, they, I mean, it no, is a construction probably, uh, site. They have industrial elevators. Exactly. Yeah, service elevators. <laughs> so, anyway, the lights go out. Batman kicks their ass. But one of them gets knocked off of the ledge. And so he's hanging there, and Batman's like, uh-oh, that guy's gonna die, and I can't let him die. Right. But Bane notices this. That's mm. where Bane's like, oh, you're not like a mythic creature that you know, that slaughters its prey. You're weak. You're weak. Mm. So you're not even the bat from my vision. Right. I must you are, though. So I guess I'll leave. Yeah, yeah. No. no, I have to fear a different bat. Yeah. yeah. I, sure. I don't know. I don't have anything to be afraid of from you, but yeah. I'm still gonna fight you, though. But I still have to fight you because I already decided I was going to. Yeah. Well, because I was created well, specifically to do that. And I came all this way. Right. Yeah. I'm not just gonna leave Gotham. Right. And go where? Coast City. Go there. Visit around this time. I hear it's nice. <laughs> you go to Metropolis. I know. No one's running that shit. No. But you'll get your ass pounded in by friggin' Superman. By four Supermen. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Yeah, actually, this has been a great time for Bane to go to Metropolis. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cyborg Superman's like, all right, you're in. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, I'm Venom Superman. Yeah, but we see Batman, like, try and save this guy. But he's huge. You know, so it's hard. So we see Batman, like, sweating. Mm. So we also see he's a man. Uh, oh. But the smarter brother... Yeah, I mean, what else? I, I know, what I know, he was wearing a fucking costume, I know, man. we got a build, though. You know I thought what you mean? were smart. Yeah, you were, like, a genius. A, no. <laughs> Yeah, but remember, I'm also motivated by a dream I had. Yeah. Well, you also grew up in a prison. And I grew up in a prison. So. I, I didn't even know what the word bird was until I was 18. <laughs> yeah, you read a lot of books, but you don't have a lot of life experience. <laughs> a lot of context. Yeah, it's high <laughs> intellect and low wisdom. That's yeah. right. Anyway, this guy, he's like, you know, the third brother. Oh, and everybody talks in like the MOOC language. Oh, yeah. Use guys. Oh, God. Uh, it's, it's, it's maddening. But anyway, uh, so I so, knock one of these two youths off this ledge. Exactly. So I says to Mabel, I says, so he, anyway, this guy is, has a gun, and then Bane's like, Bane gets him. But like you think, okay, so he crushes his head or something. No, he grabs him. He whispers, he's mine. He's nobody else's. He's mine. And I'm like, that's even more scary than just being killed by Bane. It's just being great. being grabbed by a big dude, right? Because you know how big he is, because you feel him against him, <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he's he's mine. He's not yours. He's not what he else is. Cool, cool. I'm out. <laughs> he's all yours. I would just die. You see yeah. my ghost just come out of my mouth. <laughs> but while he's like killing this guy and everybody else around him, Batman's like just just slowly getting this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Bane killed like five people. He's, he's like, like come on, meet me halfway. <laughs> so you, then you gotta pull a little bit. Yeah, you just just save me. No, just help me. 
So then finally Batman gets this guy up and then Bane is there and Bane faces him. And Bane goes, you don't kill. You, you, you're, you pretend to be a creature of the night and slaughter your enemies, but you won't break the sixth commandment. What, what is this? What even is that? And, and Batman's like- Most so bats are vegetarians. Right, Batman just goes, so you're new. What's going on? <laughs> What's your thing? What's your gimmick? You're a wrestler? Yeah. What am right. I? <laughs> <laughs> but Bane goes, you will know my name one day, and on that day you will beg for mercy. And this is one of my favorite moments of Batman ever. Batman just looks at him and goes, you're threatening me? Get in line, and smiles at him. Huh. I'm just like, yes. This is Batman. Now, this Batman will also be beaten to death in his underwear by this man. <laughs> near, but, near death. That's right. Near death. That's right. Yeah, but he doesn't scare. He doesn't scare. Yeah. But he says, you will scream my name! And then runs away going like, scream it! <laughs> it's like, okay, well, you're not really instilling a lot of You scream my name! <laughs> what is it? I bet I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. But uh, then, you know, Bullock and company burst in. Batman uh, don't leaves. Don't you mean fat Dick Tracy burst in? <laughs> That's, and that, why is he in yellow? I think they're going for an homage. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so, great. Uh, Batman leaves, and uh, they finally find one of them, the guy the Batman saved. He's alive. And like, they're like, good job, Batman. You saved one guy. There's like eight dead people Well, here. no, they're like, who did this? And the guy goes, it was Batman. And they're like, oh, Batman's a murderer now. And then what? Bullock just goes, no. <laughs> good. <laughs> and they're like, oh, remember when that wasn't a thing? Remember when like characters just were like, no. That's a stupid idea, and we're not going to follow yeah, that. Batman wouldn't do that. He's yeah. never done that. Why would he do it now? He killed the penguin. There's oh, no let's evidence. Get him then. You don't have any evidence that he killed these people. Nope. Why would you say that? Yeah. So Batman's on the roof of some building that's below Bane and company, and Bane goes, "There he is," and they go, "Yeah, there he goes." There why didn't you kill him? Goes. That that's it. Just why didn't you? He goes, "I let him live." There's a difference, and in this, this is a strange and complex world. Like I thought he was gonna be like a demon or something, and he's just a effing guy, and he's a guy who like has really selective rules. <laughs> I don't understand. There's a weird and strange world to me. Like I have to have a big belly burger. I have to go in the subway. I gotta go try out. Like I have to sex with him for the first time. Like, I gotta learn stuff before I fight I Batman. I cannot wrap my head around this. Exactly. So he's like, but but I will study him, and then when I'm done. I'm gonna break him. And you're like, the end? Question mark? And you're like, obviously not. You created him just to what? do this other thing. This is the end of this story? Yeah, yeah. Bane's like, well, I'm gonna be in this. It's gonna be dope. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in the shadows. I'm new Joker, get ready for it. Even when I'm not in the book? Yeah. I'm just, I said yeah. I'm gonna be studying him. So you could just be thinking that, oh, Bane's oh I wonder here. what Bane's up to. I wonder what Bane's Did watching. Did Bane see that happen? Yes! Is Bane taking notes on what's happening that, in his Batman book okay, right now? Okay, so here's the thing about Nightfall is that, like, you don't even need to jump to those conclusions because <laughs> in every issue, there is always a shot of Bane going like, oh. <laughs> Now, he's not normally uh -huh. taking uh -huh. notes. He's a pretty uh -huh. good, okay. he's a pretty good, learn like, he's a fast learner. He right. remembers this stuff. But, like, yeah, <laughs> he's always like, oh, yeah, it's coming. Oh, I'm going to get him. Oh, boy. Another, I, another piece of the puzzle that his Batman has been right? uh, acquired. What are you talking about? He's just tired. He just gets more and more tired. But well, Bane, does Bane orchestrate Nightfall? Nightfall? Yes. Yeah, he sets the people yeah, free, he right? he does. Right, now, that's he, part of his master plan. Part of the reason why I wanted to talk about Benjamin, besides the fact that it's like a seminal piece of Batman history, and you can get it in the comments down below, is that we're going to redo Nightfall. Oh, shit. Because there's three omnibuses for Nightfall. Oh, we didn't do it. We didn't right. do it. Yeah. So we're going to do we touched Nightfall oh, and man. Night Quest and Night's End. <laughs> and we're going to we're gonna follow... All of it. And Night Trap. <laughs> night Trap. You get elbow deep in Nightfall. It's going to be great. Yeah, we're going to get shark deep in Nightfall. That's yeah. right. We're going to get way in there. Or maybe crab deep. Ooh. You we're going to get as deep in Nightfall as Bane got in this shark that was trying to eat him. Yeah. So mouth deep. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty deep. I mean, you know. For, for a shark, shark yeah. Though. Yeah. I don't want to get that deep. No. Hell no. I, yeah, that's, that's deeper than I ever want to be in a shark. Bane beats up the Three Stooges? Yes, straight up the Three Stooges the are fuck? in this. Yeah, those are those are hoods that work for the crime family. Okay. Yep, Mo, Larry, and Curly. Boom. It's like what, what, why? That's a weird. That's a Larry, weird Curly, there. and Mo. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, what the crap? What the crap? I just wanted to draw them. Yep, thought it'd be funny. I just wanted to take you completely out of the story. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week with an old new episode of Back Issues. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. 
I don't remember those characters at all. So they're, they're, I, they're I wonder, thoroughly unremarkable. <laughs> do they have any pivotal role in Nightfall? Nightfall. They facilitate Bane's ends. Like at one right. point, you know, early on, Robin bumps into Bird, mm. which is, of course apropos. Yes. Because they're both birds. Yeah. And, and Bird's like, oh, I could, I could train you and well, make you... No, no. It's, Bird you is do, like... You'll do my whims just like all the birds do. Bird says, like, you're lame because you picked a sissy bird like a robin. And then throws a hawk at him. Aren't you supposed to appreciate all birds? Isn't that your thing? I think he's trying to... You're just, the bird guy. You're the bird guy. What about the bird you sent to Bane? That was like a sparrow. Is that more <laughs> hardcore than a robin? No, I think he's doing that to rattle Robin. I think right. he's like, you know, he's a teenager. He I don't believe it, but but you don't know that I don't believe that. Exactly. 